Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from theebookreader.com. For this video review, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Asus Transformer Infinity. Uh, so I picked this up about a month ago and I've been using it quite extensively before I did this review. Uh, so for the first part of this review, I'm just going to show you the keyboard dock setup and then I'll move on to the regular tablet uh, setup. So the keyboard dock is the same uh, as it was with the uh, original Transformer. you got the same button layout and the same sort of keys. Uh, I found that the buttons actually work a lot better than the original Transformer did. I don't have any problems with like uh, accidentally hitting the wrong button or like hitting one and not having the key come up on the screen. Sometimes I used to have that happen. Uh, overall, I really like this keyboard a lot better. Actually, this keyboard Keyboard isn't even the Infinity's keyboard. I went ahead and got the uh, keyboard for the Transformer Prime to save 90 bucks. There are, turns out that they're exactly the same. Uh, so some of the things you can do with the trackpad here, uh, you can uh, scroll obviously, and you can open links with it. So I've got some pictures right here. If you wanted to open a link in a new window, you can hold down on this, uh, hold down two fingers on the uh, on the uh, link, and then you can open a new tabs with your web browser and whatnot. So some of the other buttons on here, you've got the standard Android Home button. Uh, we've got some other quick keys up there. You can turn wireless on and off. You can adjust the brightness on the fly, launch the web browser. Uh, so there's a lot of cool quick keys that make it a little bit easier. You can also use the regular uh, like uh, control, uh, copy, control, uh, paste uh, when you're using uh, Word documents. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing with the keyboard dock. I really like it. The one thing it doesn't have is a recent apps uh, list like this one. So like on, on screen you have the recent app button and it brings up this list. Uh, I did recently find out it has something similar. If you hit alt tab yeah, you can get a list of the recent tabs, right, or at least recent eight uh, apps right there, and you can scroll through those to launch different apps uh, without having to um, use the, use the uh, touch screen at all. So uh, that's one of the really cool things about the Asus Transformer, and then you just go ahead and uh, pop out the dock right there. The dock also has a full-size SD card reader over here, and it also has a full-size uh, USB port, so it adds uh, some extra functionality and it also has a battery that adds about four to five hours of life to the tablet. So I'm going to go ahead and undock it now and then uh, move over to the regular review. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the hardware on this thing now. So uh, this is a really nice tablet. It's nice and thin. It feels like a really expensive tablet. I really like it uh, as far as the hardware and the design goes. We've got this brushed aluminum back here. Uh, we've got a 8 megapixel camera right there and it's also got the LED flash. Uh, the power button's up there and the volume button's over there. And then on the side here, we just have a uh, SD card slot right there. And then there's the mini US, or a mini HDMI port for hooking up to a TV, and that works very well. And there's also the headphone jack there. Uh, on this side over here, there's nothing but a microphone. Uh, so it's very slim, and it's very comfortable to hold. I like it a lot better than the original Transformer, which I've been using extensively for the past year. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very pleased with the design, and I'm very pleased with the uh, overall performance with the uh, 1.6 gigahertz processor. Uh, this also it runs Android 4.0 right now. Uh, it's going to be updated to Android 4.0. Uh, one at Jelly Bean here soon, so I want to do a completely different review uh, once that gets updated to Jelly Bean because I'm sure it's going to be a lot smoother. It's pretty smooth right now, but it still has some lagginess to it. Uh, I've got, also got the uh, Google Nexus 7. Uh, you can see my other review on it, and it's definitely a lot smoother, the operating system with Android 4.0 or Android 4.1 than it is with Android 4.0, so I'm really looking forward to that update. So basically, Asus runs a pretty... Uh, standard version of Android 4.0. They've added a couple of different things, so they've got their own little uh, uh, change right here where you've got the different uh, quick settings. Uh, they've also added a couple of widgets, so like this is the Asus weather widget, um, this is like the keyboard dock widget, it tells you how much, or the the, um, the battery widget that tells you how much battery you have on your pad and on the keyboard. Uh, this is sort of a quick task cleaner right there, the uh, Asus task cleaner. Um, there's also this big huge widget where it, uh, this magazine widget, right here where it shows your uh, latest uh, red uh, titles, ebooks, and it's got the web browser and music on here and it's also got your library set up right here for your ebooks and everything. So that's some of the other things that Asus's uh, tablets come with. They come with their own setup for uh, their, there's some of these own apps like we've got Asus's My Cloud for uh, cloud storage. We've got the Asus File Manager. Um, there's also uh, some other stuff in here. We've got the uh, um, the Asus at Vibe Store where you can go get ebooks and uh, music let me load it up here. It does take a couple of seconds. Um, it's got some different tabs in here. Uh, you can go get audio books and you get newspapers from uh, Press Reader, which is another app installed on here. Uh, you got also App Backup and App Locker. Those are all part of the Asus apps. It doesn't really come with any, um, you know, uh, junkware. So that's always a nice thing about Asus's tablets. Uh, and we've also got the regular suite of Google apps, of course. So one of the cool extras with Asus's tablets is they actually come with the uh, Splash Top Remote Desktop. Uh, all you got to do is download this program to your computer and then you can uh, remotely connect to your computer anywhere you want. 
and it's literally like the exact setup as your computer. You can stream music videos. Uh, so it's really a cool app that actually comes free. It's a paid app uh, you'd have to pay for elsewhere. So uh, you can access all of your files and programs on your computer. So one of the best things about the Transformer Infinity is its high resolution screen. It's got this, uh, what is it, 1920 by uh, 1200 resolution screen. So that's a big upgrade over the other screens that are uh, 1280 by 800 with the same size. So we get a lot better pixel, a lot greater pixel density. Uh, like smaller text is just a lot more uh, readable. Everything's just a lot clearer. It's really, really cool. It's like getting your eyes upgraded. I really love these new high resolution screens like the iPad 3. So this one, it isn't quite as nice as the iPad 3. It's just a little bit uh, stepped down. The colors aren't quite as nice. Um, and it doesn't have quite the pixel density, but uh, it, the difference is negligible. I mean, uh, I've been really pleased with how uh, clear everything is on the screen, and the uh, viewing angles are also really, really good. So if you go all the way to the sides, I mean, uh, it's really, really nice screen. I've been very happy with the screen on this tablet. Uh, so one detail with the screen, with these higher resolution screens, is usually the tablets get warmer uh, when you're running them at higher brightness settings. So if you have the uh, brightness all the way up as I do right now, the tablet will get pretty warm um, when you're using it. Uh, it's not going to be too uncomfortable or anything, but uh, it is one thing that's different from the older tablets uh, that didn't get warm pretty much at all when you're using them. So Asus's tablets have this power setting right here. We've got this uh, power saving mode, we've got balanced, and we've got performance. So uh, I've really noticed a big difference. If you go down to power saving mode, immediately the colors get all different. Um, you can really tell the blue in the WordPress logo right there gets different. And like the small detail in the, um, it just loses the small detail like majorly on the uh, smaller text right there. Uh, it's really different. Uh, I like keeping it set at balanced all the time. So I went ahead and ran some quad quadrant scores. Um, I got them saved over here in the gallery. And it was pretty interesting. So if you're running it on power saver mode, it's all the way down to 1870. It scores way low. It's 1870, so here's the Galaxy, uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 2. It's up here, it's like at uh, 2000 something. And then the Transformer Prime's up there, it's just over 4000. So it's pretty amazing that it's all the way down to 1800 when you're using power saving mode. Because when you're using balanced mode, it's, uh, it's all the way up to uh, 4100. So it's pretty high right there. It's above the Transformer Prime from last year. Uh, so it's 4100 on balanced mode, and then performance mode, it's uh, 4500. So uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between power saving and balanced as uh, far as the performance goes. So that's good to know. I keep it on uh, balanced all the time, personally. So the, one of the other biggest things with this tablet, it has the Tegra 3 uh, 1.6 gigahertz processor. It's nice and speedy. So I have the other transformer, with the original, with the Tegra 2 processor, and it has the exact same operating system, so it's pretty comparable. Uh, it's a good comparison. Uh, the, as far as this stuff goes, I mean, it's all sort of the same speed, but you definitely do notice the speed upgrades when you're using stuff like the browser and Google Maps. Uh, when you're scrolling, if things are just a lot smoother and faster as far as the upgraded processor goes. And I bet you once it gets upgraded to Android 4.1, it's going to even be a lot smoother because the uh, Google Nexus 7 definitely is even faster feeling than this is, and it has even a slightly slower processor. So uh, once this gets upgraded to Jelly Bean, I'm uh, sure it's going to be uh, really nice performance-wise. So you may have noticed I'm using the Chrome web browser. Uh, this thing, uh, the stock web browser, I absolutely hated it. I hate it with the old transformer and I hate it with this transformer. Um, it's actually got a decent amount of features and everything. It's just that I have this thing freeze up and crash way too frequently for my taste. Uh, and it's just slower. Uh, it does have nice features and I do like the bookmark setup better, but uh, it's just, I do not like this web browser at all. It shouldn't be even come with these tablets as far as I'm concerned. So the Play Store is loaded with apps, of course, and you can download your movies through here, books, uh, magazines, uh, music, of course, too. So uh, as far as app go, apps go, you're not going to find really any like high-performance apps, really, for the 1.6 gigahertz processor and this higher-resolution screen. I found that a lot of the apps really look the same as they do on the older Transformer because they haven't been updated for the higher-resolution screen. So a good example of that is uh, a couple of these games, like uh, Riptide. Uh, this actually looks a little bit better, I'd say, on the Google Nexus 7, just because the smaller screen, um, just the water looks better. Uh, it's the the whole reason is because the um, a lot of these apps they just haven't been updated for 
a 10 inch screen with the high resolution as this tablet. I mean it still looks fine but uh, it definitely could be better when you're comparing it to games like on the iPad. Uh, so a good comparison with the iPad version would be, I'm going to do a comparison with the iPad 3 by the way in case you're wondering, I'll get that posted probably later in the week. So Jetpack Joyride is a good uh, example because it's available on iOS and when you play this game on the iPad 3 it's been updated for the retina display on the iPad 3 so it's definitely a lot clearer than it is on this tablet. I mean it's not going, it's not saying that it looks bad by any means on here, it's just that the fine details uh, that definitely look better on the iPad 3 where it has been updated for the higher resolution screen. So you would probably expect a tablet like this with the 1.6 GHz processor not to lag at all, but that isn't the case. It does lag when you're playing games, a little bit here and there, I mean it's not anything huge, but it's probably more of a knock on the games themselves and how they're coded than it actually is on the transformer. So like when you're playing this game, you do notice lagging from time to time, just when you're going through. See, the game looks absolutely great, but you will notice it lag from time to time when you're moving like this. So as far as watching videos go, the uh, Transformer Infinity is very good in that regard. As you can see, there's still some lag when you launch apps like that. It took a few seconds. I'm um, hoping that's definitely going to go away when we get the update to uh, Android 4.1 because that's something you get with uh, pretty much all versions of Android 4.0. So like I said, the video looks great. Video plays very smoothly. The HDMI port is great for hooking up to your t television. Uh, the old transformer, I used to know that it would do this resizing thing every once in a while. Uh, when you're watching a video through HDMI, uh, this one, it doesn't do that at all. It's very smooth, very nice. Uh, one detail I've noticed with Netflix, Netflix doesn't run very well as far as the interface. The videos play fine. The uh, What is taking so long? See, some things just take too long to launch. That's just like way too long to launch something on a um, tablet with these specs. Okay, so one thing I've noticed is that Netflix videos, they play totally fine. The Netflix interface, on the other hand, is absolutely atrocious. I don't know what it is, but it runs kind of slow, like on the regular Transformer even, but it runs really smooth on the Google Nexus 7. But on the Infinity here, it is absolutely horrible. You can see how slow it takes even just to load the um, uh, covers. I mean, it takes forever. And then you try to scroll, nothing happens. It takes all super laggy. I mean, trying to use the interface on Netflix, for some reason, it does not like the Transformer Infinity all. Super laggy, trying to scroll through these titles. It's just, it's not easy at all. It's not a fun experience. I do not know what the problem is with the uh, Netflix app as far as the Infinity goes, but it's super laggy. It does not uh, offer a good experience. Netflix needs to update this to fix whatever the issue is because it runs a lot better on pretty much any other tablet. Uh, as far as the videos go, though, I mean, it does play the videos fine, so that's at least a plus. Okay, so Asus has their own ebook reading app included on their tablets. It's actually a pretty nice app. It also supports Adobe DRM. Uh, we've got some different uh, font sizes. Obviously, we've got some different features up here. We've got the bookmark list. You can add bookmarks with that icon right there. Uh, so we've got the on-screen notes. We've also got different colors, so if you wanted to add some highlights or notes this way, you could. We've also got search. We also have uh, text to speak, which is another option. So even if you hold down on a word, we'll get the highlight note copy. So you can, if you just want to hear a word pronounced, you can just hit the text to speech button, and you can also have the books read aloud with text to speech. We've also got the table of contents. So the app is actually a pretty nice app as far as e-reading goes. It doesn't have a ton of features, like it doesn't have. Uh, the adjustable text set types, but uh, as far as uh, a general e-reading app, it's actually pretty decent. So ASUS, they also load in the Press Reader app if you want newspapers and periodicals. One of the other preloaded apps is Supernote. This is a really cool note app. 
You can do uh, all these different kinds of on-screen notes. It's actually a really cool app as far as note taking goes. Um, one of their other apps, uh, Ployer's Office, this is an app I use all the time for typing documents. Uh, it comes in very handy with the, uh, obviously with the uh, Transformers keyboard dock. Uh, we've also got some templates in here if you just wanted to start up something, a resume or a report, we've got some different templates in the manual. These templates are actually new, it didn't used to have these back in the day. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video review. Uh, check out theebookreader.com. I'll have the full written review posted over there, as you can see right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also do, like I said, a comparison between the uh, Transformer Infinity and the iPad 3, since they're very comparable tablets speed-wise and uh, spec-wise. Thank you for watching.